Hi folks, thanks for stopping by and welcome to my shop. My name's Fred. Today's topic of discussion are metal lathe mandrels. What they are, how they're used, and uh, how to make one. Okay, what they are is basically a piece of round stock, uh, typically tool steel. They have been very accurately tapered uh, a couple thousandths of an inch from one end to the other and they're used to hold pulleys, gears, anything round that needs to be put in a lathe. If I needed to modify this, I mean without a mandrel, how would I hold it in a lathe? If I needed to, if I needed to reduce the diameter of this or uh, make any kind of modification in it at all. So this is a 3 8 inch hole uh, that is 0 0.3750 and uh, I'm going to show you how accurately these things are, are made. Here's my Mitutoyo, a 0 to 1 caliper or micrometer excuse me and you can see on this end it's 3.764 on this end it's 3.373 so we're talking just a couple thousandths of taper on this okay and that what that allows me to do or allows anybody to do is to slide your your gear your pulley or whatever on the shaft and to perhaps tap it a little bit with a hammer and that'll seat. It'll seat right on there. You put this in a lathe and it'll run true. Put yourself a little drive dog on the outside of here or maybe chuck this up in a three jaw chuck and with a, with a center over here and you can make all your modifications on here. Uh, when you're happy with the modifications you, you remove the mandrel from the, the lathe, knock out the mandrel and you have a a very accurately machined piece that's still running as true as before you started. So this is 3 8 Here is a 3 16 a 0.1875. All right. Again, it won't go in on this end, but on this end, it slides in and goes right up and tightens up and this can be put in the lathe. I've got quite a selection of them. I make, if you watch my channel, you'll see that I make stationary steam engines and over the years I've, I've made quite a few uh, mandrels all the way from three quarters all the way down to little ones like eighth of an inch and even smaller. I've got them down to sixteenth of an inch. But uh, they're all very accurately machined and ground and uh, they all have centers. I don't even know if you can see that. So let's go over to the lathe and uh, chuck one up and see how they work. Be right back. Okay, we're over at the Atlas 6 inch lathe. I have removed the uh, the chuck the three jaw chuck I have cleaned the threads and the, and the register on the back and I'm going to install what they call a dog plate now this dog plate was actually the 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 base of a, a chuck that kind of bit the bit the bullet and died on me so I repurposed it as a uh, dog plate basically what it is is it threads onto here has an offset stud. Come on, baby. Okay, got the chuck locked with the back ears here. Um, this rotates and drives the drive dog. This is the drive dog set up on the mandrel. It's set up on the large side of the mandrel, the, the, the larger side of the mandrel. I've got a little piece of uh, shim stock, copper shim stock in there to uh, not mark it up. 
and there's a flat on the mandrel and this key is sitting in the middle of that flat. So what we'll do now is we'll install we cleaned out the the taper. There's a Morris II taper uh, in the headstock here. This is a, a Morris II dead center. We're going to chuck that up and then we're going to put the center of this mandrel on the center of the dead center and you can see that that pin will engage that dead center. And then we're going to bring up the dead center, the tailstock We're just going to hold it for a second, and then I'm going to go. I'm going to get some uh, high-pressure lube. Stuff is phenomenal. Dead for dead centers. Just a tiny little drop is all you need. We'll just n not even a not even a drop. And that will that will keep the the dead center and the tailstock and the spinning mandrel from galling. And protect it. Give a lock off. We'll lock off the tailstock. We'll apply, apply some. Let me get you here just a little bit more. We'll apply some pressure to the tailstock like that. Lock it off. Make sure that everything is spinning properly, and we'll start up the lathe. And there we have it. We have our, our job spinning incredibly accurately on the mandrel, being driven by the dog and the dog plate. Now we could put on any tooling we so desire, uh, come up to it, and machine, machine away, okay? I don't want to I don't want to machine anything on this because it is a good pulley, but you get the idea. You go back and forth, you can face it, you can reduce the size, anything. When you're done, when you're done with your job and you've taken your measurements and all, release the tail stock, stop, get it out of the way, pull your job out, and there you go. And we just take a, a little hammer. knock out the job and there's our finished finished part okay so uh, give me a second to set up and I'm gonna show you how you can make your own mandrels be back in a minute okay folks we're back at the Atlas lathe as luck would have it I don't have any stock to to turn a mandrel so I'm gonna simulate the turning of a mandrel with a real mandrel Let's uh, imagine that this is uh, three quarters of an inch in diameter, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to take, and we want a 5 eighths inch arbor, all right? What we will do is chuck up that, or first we will uh, face each end and center bore it, okay, in our stock. Then we'll put it, we'll insert it back into the, the dog plate, bring up the tail stock, still has a high pressure lube in it from our previous operation. So now we've got a piece of uh, three quarter inch stock uh, chucked up and ready. What you want to do now is reduce this diameter to something a little over five eighths of an inch, maybe couple thousands maybe one or two thousands over two thousands over the nominal diameter of five eighths which is this, the bore we want uh, okay so we've got this nice and true to just a little over five eighths of an inch now the next operation requires us to move the tail stock and that can be a, a pain but uh, for this operation that's what you need to do and what I do is put a dial indicator put a dial indicator on the uh, 
the work get a zero going here and then however you move your tail stock on your lathe move it over toward you about two thousandths of an inch and what that is going to do is it's going to bring this piece closer to you so that when we start turning again it'll be removing material from this side and as the carriage progresses up will gradually stop cutting and at that point what you want to do is, is get your your micrometer and start miking along in here until you get the 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 size you want for your diameter of your of your gear or your pulley about in the center okay and then polish it up and then you can remove it and you have now you have a is a mandrel that's smaller than the diameter you want on this end and larger than you have on this end and in the middle there's a sweet spot where it'll it'll uh, butt right up and, and work the last thing you gotta do is you gotta move your tail stock back um, a good starting point would be to put the dial indicator back on here and if you moved it a thousandth of an inch move it back a thousandth of an inch using the dial indicator and then put your test bar in and run it and find out exactly where that tail stock needs to be so that's it uh, that's it for today I hope you found this somewhat helpful if you like this sort of content check out my other machining videos if you have questions or ideas for other videos you know leave me a comment below as always Thanks for watching and have a good day.